All the way back in the mythical era of 2019, I decided to try and make a proper game in Unity. The core idea was that you had to dodge these boulders that fell from the sky, so I named it Boulder Dash. Get it? I know, I was the funniest person alive at that time. The game's progression consisted of a flash game style shop where you could buy hugely creative upgrades like this one that lets you run faster, using coins that fall from the sky. Despite the core idea being to dodge boulders, there's almost no dodging in the game because the dodging mechanics are really annoying. So it's easier to just collect the coins until you randomly die. And then you can buy things so that you randomly die less. And all this goes on until you finally reach enough to buy the final upgrade, priced at 250,000 coins. I mean, that's one way to increase the playtime. Recently, I've been trying to remake this game, almost five years later, and one of the things that has been really challenging to me is trying to make it fun. I've never really been that good at making fun games, and now I've tricked myself into trying to make this fun. The first game was really easy, and that was more of a design flaw than a balancing issue. You see, the only thing determining the difficulty was a single number, the time between spawning boulders. Decreasing this number made the game harder, but it didn't really become harder to beat, just harder to keep playing. The lower this number, the more likely you are to randomly die, which means that you're just going to have to press the play button on the main menu a lot more, and that's about it actually. The first step to fixing this is to make sure that it's easier to see where the boulders are falling, so I made the game 2D and take place in a 2D oblique perspective. But that didn't work very well, because what is even going on here? The boulders fall, and then disappear when they hit the ground, but that looks super weird due to the perspective. Also, how do you get hit here? Is it when the boulder hits the ground, which could be at any point beneath the boulder, or is it if you touch it at all? That would probably be the most intuitive answer, but also how do you get hit by something that's in the air somewhere in front of you? I ended up solving this by adding these hit indicators. They're basically a shadow that tells you where it will actually land. This gives you something more consistent to pay attention to, also allowing me to increase the boulder speed to something that feels a little more accurate without worrying about difficulty. The gameplay is still very shallow though, because this is just it. So I added some revolutionary systems to slowly increase the difficulty, and a new type of boulder, the splitting boulder, which splits apart into some fragments which acts like normal bullet hell projectiles. And now we have gameplay that feels hard, but in a fun way. Also, I have changed the end goal of the game. Instead of needing to buy an upgrade worth hundreds of hours of gameplay, all you have to do now is make it to the end of a 20 minute bullet hell marathon that progressively gets harder and harder. Okay, the wording there makes it sound like it's worse now, but trust me, it's not. Also, I think this just works better as an end goal, because in the original game, the only reason you're playing the game is to get that single upgrade, but now there's actually a reason to get as far as possible. As you survive, you're awarded points at a consistent rate, which replaces the coin system. I'm calling them points for now, for lack of a better name, but if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Anyway, you can spend these points in a shop after you die to make surviving next time easier, and eventually you have obtained enough upgrades that you can comfortably do the 20 minutes without dying dying and beat the game. I think this will also make speedrunning the game very cool, because the only thing you have to do to win is get to the end of the 20 minutes. Everything else is just to make it easier, meaning that the theoretical best run would be 20 minutes. But also, you'd have to do that with one health and no extra movement abilities, so I don't think that's going to happen. This enables a lot of strategy about deciding what upgrades you want to get to make it easy for you to do it, but the more upgrades you get, the longer it'll take for you to get them, making your speedrun time less competitive. In the original game, whenever you died, you would be booted back to the main menu, where you could click on the shop button to buy upgrades. This doesn't make a lot of sense for a few reasons. One being that the shop is so disconnected from the actual game, that a normal person on their first playthrough might accidentally think that the shop button is for cosmetics or something. So I moved the shop to a much more sensible place, the edge of reality. Now when you die, instead of going back to the main menu, you get transported into the afterlife. But even in the afterlife, you can't escape capitalism, because this is now where you buy your upgrades, before walking into the giant yellow circle to reincarnate and start a new run. So that's about where we're at with the game right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next devlog. Goodbye forever.